Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Turner Chapel AME Church pre-service broadcast. We are located at 492 North Marietta Parkway, right here in Marietta, Georgia. We are under the dynamic leadership of the Reverend Dr. Taruwe Richard Allen Bright, our beautiful first family, Lady Rita Bright, their wonderful children, Taruwe Richard Allen Jr. and Tarita Bright. I am your host and a proud member of Turner Chapel, Paula Ferguson, and we are so appreciative of you being with us. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Praise God that you are with us this morning. We are so incredibly grateful to have you with us. For those of you who are coming back each and every Sunday, God bless you. We are so glad that you are here to join us. We want you to like, share, subscribe, put in the chat, let us know where it is that you're tuning in from. Also, I think there's a QR code, so you want to scan that QR code, and our hashtag is hashtag TCC Virtual Worship. Before we go any further, we've got some guests today that are going to share a little bit about what's going on at Turner Chapel. But before we go any further, let us open up in prayer. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord, just giving you all glory, honor, and praise for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do in our lives. Lord, we strive to do what it is that you have called us to do, but there are times that we fall short. And for those times that we just ask for forgiveness of any thought, word, or deed that has not been pleasing to you, Lord, as we go forth in this service, Lord, those that are viewing virtually, Lord, those that are in-house, Lord, maybe they be blessed by the word that comes forward, blessed in such a manner that will enrich their lives, that will draw them closer to you, Lord, and that will draw them closer to you to give glory. These and all the mighty blessings we ask in Jesus' name, we all say and pray, amen, amen, amen. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Uh, just a couple of things before we get started. We have had a busy month this past month. Um, in February, actually, our pastor and our first lady both had birthdays, and we celebrated both of them. We had a glorious time. We've been very busy here at Turner Chapel. We just have come off of our spring production, Trespass, a marvelous, marvelous production. And this uh, past Friday, our Easter produc production, Jesus, His Journey. So we've got a lot going on here at Turner Chapel. And also, before I bring on our first guest, I want to give a shout out to our audio and video ministry. Without them, without them, we would not have the ability to do what it is that we do so that Good you can morning. join us each and every Good Sunday. Morning. So Good thank morning. you all so very the much for all that you do. All right. And also the fourth Sunday just reminded me the fourth Sunday second or fourth Sunday we have altar prayer and the uh, members of the intercessory prayer ministry are at the altar um, each and second and fourth Sunday praying with those who are in the service a bit early so uh, hopefully we'll have a representation of them uh, next month as well all right well we're going to bring on our first member and guest today this is Ms. Rosalind Cheney and she's going to share a bit about uh, the social concerns. She's in the ministry, your ministry lead for social concerns, and it falls under one of our core values. So she's going to share with us as well. Thank you so much. As always, you look fabulous. Thank you. You're <laughs> always so very kind. Thank you, Paula. So share with us a little bit about what's going on and what our virtual congregation needs to know. Okay. First off, I would like to say it is under the core value of love your neighbor. What better way than to love your neighbor than to talk about the election? Yes. Reverend Daisy Barnum, mm -hmm. she is the leader, the minister lead on Love Your Neighbor. Mm -hmm. And on the social concern, I would like to first say that in May 12th, we are going to have another election in uh, the state of Georgia. So I'm going to give you a website I would like for all my voters, the ones who have not voted, and the ones who are currently registered. Please, before April 22nd, go to sos.ga.gov. Again, that is sos.ga.gov. If you are registered, go ahead and confirm that your registration is still there. That's important. If you have not registered, please, this is a critical election year. Go ahead and register. 
I know you're going to stay online to hear our wonderful bishop speak today. Yeah. But when that closes out, just open another window and go and register. May 20, uh, April 22nd mm -hmm. is your last day to register. For those of you who are not able to get to the poll, please go to that same website and yes. pick up an absentee ballot because we definitely want you to vote in May, but more importantly, we want you to vote in November. I am going to ask Paula if she will have me back oh, in October yes. so we can talk about that November election. But again, it's sos.ga.gov. And, you know, it's uh, the, and, and thank you so much for sharing that information. And absolutely, you know, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you are you. welcome back anytime. But, you know, it is so critical. Yesterday, I had the honor of emceeing a 95th birthday party for uh, a woman by the name of Carlene Mosley. Awesome. She, she and her family members participated in Bloody Sunday. Uh -huh. When I tell you, it brought, it, it really, you know, I've always known the, the, the importance of voting because of other family members. Mm -hmm. But sitting there, and listening to her really resonated and just really heightened mm -hmm. my my the presence the already presence of uh, knowing my responsibility to vote. So yes. you know, it, our, our vote has come with sacrifice. Yes, it has, and it's very important for us to get out and vote. So give that website one more time: s o s dot g a dot g o v. And I would like to uh, sure. uh, segue on what you just spoke about, mm -hmm. the birthday party. Mm -hmm. Last month, I'm sure our viewers saw that wonder rendition that the drama ministry did mm -hmm. of the sacrifice we mm -hmm. had to have this right to vote. So go ahead and make sure that you register for our ancestors as well as yes. for yourself. S-O-S dot G-A dot G-O-V. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I mean, Thank you know, you. what you do for the ministry is such a just such a wonderful thing. So we appreciate you coming back Thank periodically you. every quarter to keep us posted on what is going on. So thank you so much. It Thank is you. my pleasure, <laughs> Paula. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. You all have heard it. You all know the importance, the importance, y'all of getting out to vote and making sure that your vote counts. I know with everything going on, we, you know, sometimes feel that perhaps, you know, it doesn't, but it does. Our vote counts. So make sure you, you get out and vote. All right. We are going to now bring up our next ministry leader. This is Ms. Audrey Adams, and she's always just looking so fabulous. And <laughs> she's here with the 201 class building spiritual 201 class building spiritual habits. So she's going to share with us a little bit um, about that and tell us a little bit about that. So Thank you, Paula. You are so you're so Good welcome. Good morning. Good morning to everyone <laughs> on this beautiful Palm Sunday. Yes. yes, I'm Audrey Adams, and I'm one of the facilitators who lead Bible study classes here at Turner Chapel. And um, for the other classes, you need to go to our TCC website, mm -hmm. News and Events Calendar, for the listing of those classes. Now, as Paula had mentioned, I do facilitate Class 201, Discovering Habits That Lead to Spiritual Maturity. Now, this class is offered to both new and current members with a desire to become mature Christians. Now, Ephesians 4.14 tells us that we are not to remain as children, but to grow up in every respect as the body of Christ. So as believers, we must grow to become spiritually mature, moving from membership to discipleship. And that means becoming more Christ-like. So the eight-week membership class that I um, facilitate is a Zoom class, and we discuss the four habits that lead to spiritual maturity. And they are the habits of time with God's Word, the habit of prayer, the habit of tithing, and the habit of fellowship. The great workbook, we have a great workbook that we use that includes scripture-based lessons and tools to assist with this process. Now, the habits are discussed and they are practiced throughout the eight weeks that we are together as we're striving to become at aoadams528 at aol.com. Again, that's aoadams528 at aol.com. And I will forward you the class workbook. 
Now the class info and Zoom link are listed on the TCC website. So I'm looking forward to hearing from some of you. All right, thank you. Yes, okay. thank you so very much for that okay. information. So you all make sure you uh, stay connected and that you join this wonderful, wonderful class. Thank all right, you thank you so, so much, much, Paula. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We've got a lot going on here at Turner Chapel. Just checking our time. We've got a lot happening here. We've got a lot going on here at Turner Chapel. And we're going to have one more guest here. This is Alexis Ezel. She's going to tell us a little bit about our Easter fun day and our Easter program. And you've seen Alexis before, and she shared a little bit with us before. Good morning. It's good to see you. Good morning. Good to see you, too. So Easter fun day is on the way, and we need your help. We need you to register for the event. It's on March 30th from 10.30 to 2.30. And we also need you all's help as volunteers. So anybody you know that might want to come, have games, have an egg hunt, win prizes, tell them about our Easter fun day on March 30th at 10.30. If you have anybody who would like to volunteer and help, we need you. So please go on our website and volunteer with us. Thank you so much. You know, we always have such a wonderful time each year. And you do all, you do such a wonderful job with this each year. So we thank you so much. Easter fun day, March, March 30th. 30th. From 10.30 to 2.30. Come for food, games, egg hunts, and more. And more. And, and more. And we're going to have a great time. This is a really busy week this week. And the Easter fun day has always been a wonderful um, occasion and Alexis and all of the other volunteers that have coordinated and coordinating it um, do a fabulous job. So thank you so much thank for joining us. Thank you for this having morning. me. Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, you have heard it. We want you to get out and vote. We have some classes that we would like, would love for you to engage in. Our Easter fun day, we have a lot going on here at Turner Chapel. This is going to be a busy week this week. We Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. This is a, a busy week this week. We have baptism that will be going on this morning as well. We have a lot going on here, so we know that you will stay tuned to us right here, Turner Chapel Amy Church. Make sure you visit our website for all the updates, uh, the time of the service. If you choose to come to the service in person, the time of the service, our classes, our events and activities. You can also go on the website. There's some pictures from Lady Rita's birthday party. We had a fabulous time, y'all. We had a fabulous time. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. TurnerChapelAME.org. Visit our website, please. Y'all make sure you like you share, you subscribe, let us know where you are tuning in from. And remember that the greatest conversation you will ever have is the one that takes place in between your ears. What are you speaking to yourself? Is God a part of that conversation? And are you listening to his still small voice? Our service is about to begin, so I want you all to sit back, relax, stay tuned in, worship with us, give God the glory. If you woke up this morning, you need to give God some glory. If you could open your eyes, you need to give God some glory. If you can stand up and hold up your hands, you need to give God some glory. If you can turn on the faucet, give God some glory. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. We love you. God bless you. And we will be going to the service in just a moment. So thank you so much for being with us this morning. God bless you. We praise you and give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Today is Palm Sunday. Get our palms today. We get our palms today. <laughs> it is Palm Sunday. We are about to praise God for all that he has done and all that he continues to do. Lord, let us give God some praise and glory. And now, our service in progress. Praise God. Please join us in our congregational praise song. Sing praises to the King. All hail King Jesus. Come on, keep those palm branches up.
all hail King Jesus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, we come lifting up your name, dear master, lifting up your life, dear father, and what you have done for us, dear master. We start on Palm Sunday saying all hail King Jesus, dear master, and we know that the week changed, dear master, but on Sunday morning, on Easter Sunday morning, you rose to save all of us, dear master. So we thank you for today because it leads us to next week. Father God, we pray now for this service. We pray, Lord, that you would touch each and every individual that's here, dear master. We know some have come in with issues of jobs, issues of health, dear master, just issues of life, dear father. And we know that their coming here is to hear a word from you, dear master. And so we ask that you touch each and every person in here in to meet the needs that they have, that they brought forth, dear father. And we thank you, Lord, for all of those who are here that are worshiping to our Father, that are doing what they need to do to serve you, dear Father, from the choir to the parking lot, dear Master. We thank you for their gifts of service, dear Master. And Lord, we pray now for the word that's coming forth. We lift up our pastor, dear Father, that he will hear a word from you, and then that word would come to each and every one of us, dear Master. We know, dear Father, that you are in this place. We lift you up, dear Father, because when praises go up, blessings come down. And Lord, we just praise you and we thank you. And we lift up those who may not know you in the pardon of their sins, dear Father, that they will hear a word that they will say, what must I do to be saved? We thank you right now in the precious name of Jesus for all that we do in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Look to your neighbor and say, I serve a beautiful God. Come on, I serve a beautiful God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, Lord. I saw the Lord seated on his throne. And the train of his robe fills this temple. And day and night, the angels proclaim. And they sing, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Come on, be exalted. Be Church Jehovah, come on. The Lord Jehovah. The Lord Most High. The Lord Most High. Come on, let's do it again. Come on. Be exalted. Come on. Be exalted. Be lifted high. Creation. Creation. 
Daddy or Jehovah. Daddy or Jehovah. The Lord most the high. Lord most holy, high. holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Come on, let's say it together. Come on, holy. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come.
Hallelujah. 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 Hmm. To die for. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Good morning, Turner. Come on, we can do better than that. Good morning, Turner. 
Good morning. I am a youth pastor, Wayne. Just so some folks who are in here who are new and visiting, um, just want to shout out to the youth ministry, GAP Generation Activated with a Purpose. Um, so do we have any visitors this morning? My brother is standing. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Any other, I got a two, second to third that want to stand and be bold and say you a visitor? Amen, amen, amen. Well, we thank you for coming by, stopping by, hopefully to, to, to stay with us. Anybody online as well, if you are visiting online, please put in the chat um, that you are visiting, and we would definitely want to reach out to you. And on behalf of Pastor Bright, our pastor, amen. Y'all clap it up for our pastor, Tyree Way Bright. And First Lady, First Lady Rita Bright, we welcome you. We welcome you. We thank you for coming on by. And here at Turner, we love God. We love each other. Amen. We love God's word and we love our neighbors. Amen. Um, excuse me if I'm uh, out of order when, because, uh, you know, normally I'm downstairs with the youth, right? Um, did y'all do a thing, y'all fellowship? And, and right after welcome, right? So I know we have this on the palms. And so if you don't want to, you know, touch and agree with hands and pound or do a dap or anything, you can just wave at somebody and say, good morning, good morning. Uh, but if you're about that and you want to love on someone, hug on them, you can get up right now and go ahead and do so. Amen.
All right. We told you we love each other, right? And our neighbors, amen. You can play the video. All good, you know. Um, the video was going to show a little audio from my brother Joe and I. Um, just doing a little friendly uh, uh, competition, a little junk talking, you know. Uh, April 13th, uh, I'm sorry, I'm doing GAP youth announcements. So, real quick, April 13th, put it on your calendar. You know why? I want y'all to come see old school beat the new school. Yeah, Trey not here, right? Trey not here. So, old school is going to win, but I need y'all to go ahead and put on your calendar April 13th. We're going to start at 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock is when we are allowing elementary students to come. We have like what we call an open gym um, where they can come and play some. Um, we got some uh, little friendly competition with that, with a uh, three-point contest, uh, free throw um, shooting, and just regular games. And then at 4, we're going to do uh, something for the middle and high schoolers, three-on-three -three tournament. And then at 5, that's when it goes down. Say it's go down. It goes down. It goes down. Five o'clock, please. I need y'all to come. Um, we are making this, or we would, we desire this to be a family fun event. So we we want you to come. With, you can put, you can um, wear your old school shirts, uh, or you can represent for the new school as well. Uh, but I got something for you, Trey. So me and Joe are ready. So if you see this, you know we waiting for your video next. Yeah. All right. So April 13th, mark that on your calendar. And then also I want to give a quick shout out. You may have seen some stuff on, uh, on the e-blast or on uh, Turner's uh, YPD Instagram page. We have um, partnered up with Kennestone Hospital. And Lori, with Classmates for Christ, has um, asked you guys to donate some Valentine bags. Um, so you may see pictures um, and, 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 and um, videos. But she, huh? Easter. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm talking about something now. I'm talking about something now. Ooh. But I, see, that's a good family right there. They got me. We love each other. See how that is? No, but what I'm saying is, Lori um, we're asked you guys to donate um, um, last month for Valentine's to give to the kids in, at, in Kennestone. So we gave over 30 bags um, to the children and the Kennestone Hospital. And so we received the video and stuff like that. So there you go right there. Um, kids made um, cards, and they were blessed. And so in that as well, I just want to throw this out. The parents um, written out letters to thank Turner. Thank you guys. So we are posting them on the door, on uh, the nursery door, and, and uh, we will be sending that on e-blast too. Amen? So uh, Lori said, make sure you thank me. And so I wanted to do so. Now. What you were talking about, March 30th, yeah, hey, yeah, come on, come on, March 30th, Easter fun day. We are excited, man, they've been working super hard, uh, the committee, um, they've been um, putting Easter eggs together, uh, baskets, and just having prizes, and you know, we're going to have a fun time, Amen. So we need all the youth to, if uh, parents to sign up the youth on uh, March 30th, that starts at 10.30, uh, ends around 2.30. We have game truck, teens, teens, I think teens will be excited about that. Um, but we have a game truck, we have bouncy houses, we free food, <laughs> everybody excited about that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so please uh, sign up, you'll see some um, registrations and emails. And we need volunteers, I got to plug this in. Y'all already know, this, this is a big event, so we need some people to sign up to help. We have about 30, but we need for this, for about four, three, 400 kids, we're going to need some help, y'all. Y'all know how it is when we go on field trips. When you, we need some chaperones. We need some folks. So please sign up for the Sign Up Genius uh, that you'll see in an email. Amen? Um, we got some recognition that's happening, and... I'm going to let the Girl Scouts, they will go first. Y'all give it up for the Girl Scouts, please. 
Awesome. Amen. Good morning, Turner Chapel. Uh, first, I give honor to God and our Reverend Bright, Lady Bright, and all the other ministers here today. My name is Bernadette King. I am the ambassador troop leader for the Girl Scouts here at Turner Chapel, where we are under the direction of our awesome leader, Ms. Kelly Watson. And I am here today, very excited to present our 2024 Gold Award Girl Scouts. The Gold Award is the highest and most prestigious award in Girl Scouting, which for some context is the equivalent of an Eagle Scout. Girl Scouts spend several months and nearly 100 hours planning, developing, and carrying out lasting solutions to issues in their communities and beyond. The Gold Award is awarded to less than 5% of all Girl Scouts annually. Since 2017, Turner Chapel has produced 20 Girl, Gold Award Girl Scouts. And today, we're very thrilled to present to you numbers 21 and 22. Our first Gold Award Scout is Miss Ashley Watson. Her project, entitled The Pink Heart Project, focused on a lack of feminine products available to girls at school during the day. She addressed this issue by collecting a variety of products and creating over 250 hygiene kits for girls at her school. She partnered with her student life center to continue to give these out to girls for free and to restock as they need. Congratulations to Ashley Watson. Our second Gold Award Scout of the Day is Miss Perry Lockett. Perry's project called Cell Phone Literacy, designed to create workshops for seniors to allow them to set up their cell phones and to learn how to best use them for daily tasks. Her project built positive relationships between seniors and herself and allowed her to share some knowledge about technology to improve the uh, generation gap between us and seniors. Congratulations <laughs> to Perry Lockett. And in addition, Perry has also been awarded the Girl Scouts of Greater Atlanta Gold Award Scholarship in the amount of $1,000. And this is due to her commitment to Girl Scouting over the many years and her vast experiences as a Girl Scout. And to date, she is our third Gold Award Scholarship winner in four years, right here from Turner Chapel. So we are very proud of our scouts. They are doing great works. And now we will have a word from Mr. Andre Sims. Good morning, Turner family. Wow, isn't this amazing? Wow. So. Um, on behalf of the city of Marietta, uh, we want to recognize these young ladies as well. Um, so I'm going to read a uh, proclamation, and um, we just have to give these young ladies some love, okay? So congratulations to Ashley and Perry uh, on earning the Girl Scout Gold Award with Troop 8107 and being recognized today, the 24th, at Turner Chapel. Your success in earning badges, demonstrations of leadership skills, and complete, completing community service projects are just a few of the components that enable you to earn the highest and most prestigious award of Girl Scouting. Mayor Tumlin, myself, Councilman Sims, and the entire um, city council uh, know you and your family are very proud of this achievement. We encourage you to continue to set high goals in life and work hard to achieve them. We also commend your scout leaders at Troop 8107 for their support and guidance. 
with only 5% of all Girl Scouts achieving the gold award, your commitment and perseverance with the support of your family and scout leaders enable you to achieve this destination uh, that will follow you for a lifetime. So on behalf of, uh, in recognizing this outstanding life achievement, Mayor Tumblin, myself and city council, do hereby present you with two Marietta lapel pins. One is an M for Marietta, and then the second one, the mayor loves this one, is the big chicken, okay? So wherever you go, people are gonna ask you about this big chicken thing, right? So you just say, hey, it's a Marietta thing, right? So um, join us, all of us, in saluting Ashley, and Perry, Girl Scout Gold Award recipients. Grace and peace, Turner Chapel. I'm Assistant Scoutmaster Lyle Gladney for your Troop 312, and I am pleased and proud to present our 12th Eagle Scout, Quincy Washington. First and foremost, the troop would like to thank the servant leader of this flock, Reverend Dr. Taruay Richard Allen Bright Sr., and his lovely wife, First Lady Dr. Rita Bright, Executive Pastor Don Ezel, and Youth Pastor Wayne Reynolds. Without your unwavering support and loving dedication, this successful Boy Scouting program would not be possible. I'm sure you all recall Mr. Willis and Mr. Washington's prior words about the narrow percentage of scouts who eventually earned Eagle rank. In 2019, it was about 8%. And how much more remarkable Quincy's achievements are considering the even narrow numbers as a scout of color. But is there scientific proof of the significance and benefits of this achievement? Well, in 2012, Baylor University published a study examining the impact of scouting and fostering positive youth development and healthy, virtuous behaviors. 
The study found that compared to scouts and non-scouts, Eagle Scouts exhibit significantly higher levels of health and recreation, connection, service, and leadership, environmental stewardship, goal orientation, planning, and preparedness, and character. It has been our collective privilege and honor watching Quincy grow and exhibit all of these things through his scouting journey. To earn the rank of Eagle, a scout must identify a service project that is a significant contribution to the community while fulfilling the scout oath to help other people at all times. When Minister Wayne mentioned to Quincy the desire to have a dedicated fire pit for the youth of Turner, Quincy set out on a 350 hour journey to get this accomplished. So we present to you Fireside in the Community located at the Marcus Mission House. A recreational pit to be used by the church community to carry out ministry activities. The fire pit is constructed of paver wall bricks of 1,250 square foot octagon shaped landing surface. The layout of the area was beautifully designed with an inner square border shape and landscape pavers, flanked by flagstones, encased by wood timbers and elevated with four strategically crafted steps. Decorative stones and solar lighting finished off the inviting appearance. Again, Quincy Washington, our 12th Eagle Scout. I'm back. Boys got to get love too. So um, we're going to say ditto to what I uh, mentioned earlier. We're just going to add the Boy Scout troop to it. And uh, we want to give uh, Quincy love and, and all the boys that have uh, gotten to this incredible level. So uh, with that, from the city of Marietta and the mayor, we congratulate you, we salute you, and we know you're going to do big things. Amen. We, Troop 312, Minister Wayne and the YPT of Turner, I'm sorry, YPD of Turner, invite you all to the Marcus Mission House for a special dedication of the fire bit immediately following service. time put your hands together again for our uh, gold award winners as well as our Eagle Scout. Amen. Amen. It is at this time that we uh, prepare for the ministry to uh, ministry of giving. All right, let's try that again. It is time for the ministry of giving. Amen. Amen. Uh, right before we do that, I do want to make sure that we recognize uh, Ms. Sonia Allen, who is running for Cobb County District Attorney. Uh, please remember to vote on May 21st. Sonia, if you don't mind, stand up and wave to everybody so that they can see you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, and we will continue to keep you lifted in prayer uh, as you go uh, seek this office. Amen. Amen. Um, as I 
I said, it's time for the ministry of giving. This is the opportunity that you have in which you can uh, give of your tithes and offering or give of your sacrifices or give of that which God has blessed you with. It's an opportunity for you to um, continue to be the hands and feet for the ministry that God has for this church. These offerings, this tithes and offering, it goes towards the work that you see. The work with our scouting, the work with our youth, the work with uh, within the community. This is an awesome opportunity that we should be able to smile and give cheerfully towards this ministry and the work that we do. So, at this time on your screen, you will see the various ways in which you can give. You see our uh, cash app. Uh, you see our online platform um our website and our online platform, as well as you see our text number for uh, texting to give. Please, 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 during this time, as God touches your heart and as you begin to think about how he's continued to take care of you over and over again and how he continues to make provisions for you, you just give back to the work that he is doing through this church. So let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for uh, this opportunity to give. For those who um, would love to give and have it not, oh God, we ask that you bless them. But God, we ask that no matter where we are and uh, what place we find ourselves, that we be the type of givers that are cheerful, the type of givers that are giving willingly, the type of givers that understand what it takes to do your work. Lord, we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now, for those who are inside the sanctuary, our ushers will be coming around. Just lift your hand or lift your offering and they will come around to you and you can just drop it in the basket. At this time, we'll have some music from our music ministry. You'll also see some various announcements on the screen that you can uh, uh, take advantage of. Uh, and we look forward to you enjoying the rest of the service. Amen. Sunday, and if you tell me good morning, yeah, get tell me good morning with some palm in your hand. Good morning. Hey, Amen. I love you all. I love you, Turner Chapel. Happy Palm Sunday. It's good to see you all in church this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, it's so good to see you this morning. It is so good. It's a blessing to see you. 
Now, now look at somebody else and say it like you mean it. Just tell them, I I'm so glad to see you this morning. My, my, my. You know. Amen. I am so glad. Again, we want to congratulate uh, Ashley and Perry and Quincy. Uh, man, we, we do. We want to congratulate them, their parents. We have a little bit more going on today in church. But today's fourth Sunday is good to lift up our young people. I, I would rather be in church celebrating our young people than be before the judge pleading for a sentence to be reduced. Can I say that one more time? I would rather be in church celebrating the accomplishment of our young people than to have to go to a courtroom to plead to a judge to reduce a sentence for our young people. Now we can give God some praise for these young people. They, they've done well. They've done well. They, they, they've done what men of that young people couldn't do. Amen. My, my, my. I feel a shout coming in my spirit just because of that. I, I feel something coming over me. There's hope, y'all. There's hope. Somebody said there's hope. Now, now, if a young person is sitting by you or somebody who looks young, if somebody is sitting by you who look young, look at them and say, I'm so proud of you. Amen. Hey! just claim to be young, but that's all right. I can see that. That's all right. You're young at heart. Amen, somebody. Let me, you know, we, this Sunday, it's Palm Sunday, and uh, we do baptism on this Sunday. We recognize those who uh, have celebrated or is celebrating or will celebrate the birthday in the month. And so you were born in the month of March. Please stand. My, my, my. And, and for those who are viewing this virtually, if you were born in March and somebody is by you, just tell them, that this is my month. This is my month. Amen. Now, now do this for me. If they're right around you, just reach out to them and love on them and say happy birthday. If, if, if somebody is standing by you, just love on them and tell them happy birthday. Happy birthday. Tell them happy birthday. Tell them happy birthday. Come on, Daryl. Happy birthday. Let's sing that happy birthday song to them. Birthdays for granted, oh God, for it shows that you still love us and you're still blessing us. So, for those who are in the sanctuary this morning and those who are viewing this worship service virtually, celebrating their birthdays, we say thank you. Bless them, continue to order their steps, and continue to be with them. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Now, quickly. 
uh, Sister Rita, she has our, has our birthday ministry. So Rita, you have to come back, come on this side, because you got to do, uh, is there anybody who's celebrating the birthday today? Today, today, March the 24th. Anybody? You, is your birthday today for real? <laughs> that's, that's my buddy over there. <laughs> that's my friend. Give him a gift, please. Happy birthday. My, my, my. Oh. <laughs> Taking his, his license. Pastor, that's my license. I want to. Hey, Amen. That's my buddy over there. Hey, Amen. Anybody setting a birthday next Sunday, Easter Sunday? That would be the 31st. Oh, it's a little man over there. There's another. Oh, the two of them. Okay. Just come, 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 please. Because she, I told her she's going to walk around this, this place a lot. Aretha, you got to move faster than that. Oh, okay. You got two more left. We're just going to stop here now. My, my, my. Come and give God some praise for all these folks celebrating their birthdays. Amen. Amen. Okay, I see it. I see it. Now, this is the thing, though. These are gift certificates for the books for our marketplace. You can go in there and get a gift on the pastor in the church. Amen. God bless you all. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Got one more thing to do before the word is preached. And that is the baptism of the sacrament of holy baptism. Uh, all of the family members and those who've been baptized, just please stand where you are. All of you, just please stand. Amen. And just remain standing, please. Dear beloved, for as much as all men are conceived and born in sin, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but live in sin, committing actual transgressions. And our Savior Christ said, none can enter the kingdom of God except he or she be regenerated and born anew of water and the Holy Spirit. I beseech you to call upon the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, that of his bounteous goodness he will grant unto these persons that which by nature they cannot have, that they have been baptized with water and the Holy Spirit and receiving the Christ's Holy Church and be made life the members of the same. Merciful God, grant that the old Adam and these children may be buried and that the new man or woman may be raised in them. Grant that they may have power and strength to have victory and triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Somebody say amen. amen. Almighty everlasting God, whose most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins, did share out his most precious side, both water and blood, and gave commandments to his disciples that they should go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, we God, we beseech you the supplication of this congregation. There ain't no water in here. Sanctify this water 
and the water in the peak in the pool sanctify water for this holy sacrament and grant that the persons now to be baptized may receive the fullness of your grace and ever remain in the number of your fit for elect children through Christ our Lord. Somebody say amen. Now, family members, you have all been through the baptism class and nobody's expected of you. Do you solemnly promise to fulfill these duties as far as in you lies the Lord being your helper? If so, say we do. Amen. All right, we ask the family of uh, little Davis, Melon Davis, to come forward, please. The rest of you may be seated for a minute. Thank you. Amen. Name this child. Milani Royal Davis. Uh, who will bring uh, uh, bring her up for baptism? Lita. Her, her parents, her grandparents, and her godmom. What did you just do? <laughs> Give me her name again. Malani. Malani, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let somebody say. Amen. Come and give God some praise for her. Family of Jenny, will you please come forward, please? Name this child. Jaden Torrance Luke Hill. Jaden, you got a lot of names just like your pastor. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my. <laughs> uh, do you want to call the names of those who are just uh, standing with you? Uh, every, you mean got a parent? Uh, I'll call his grandmother, um, his sister, aunties. Uh, grandfather, this is Reverend Hallam Denny, my dad, his dad is parking, and their cousins, uh, lots of family and godparents. Amen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Since his grandfather is a preacher, I wanted to make sure if he were comfortable doing it, or he wanted me to do it. He said, no, Pastor, you go ahead and do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amen. Name this child again. Jaden. Jaden, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say. Amen. Come and give God some praise for Jaden. Thank you all so much. Amen. Now, Turner Chapel, you know what we do. We affirm that this is more than just a church. It is a community. Amen, somebody? And we affirm that we will help these parents 
raise their children. If you believe it and you agree with me, say amen. amen. All right. I told you all we got a lot to do today. Now those who will be immersed, just come forward. Please come forward. We got, we got a camera for them? Good. Okay. Now, you all love the Lord? Amen. Okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. Now, do you all renounce the devil and all his works, the fame, promise, and glory of this world with all Covetous desires of the flesh so that you would not follow nor be led by them. Your answer is, I renounce them all. Are you ready to be baptized? Say yes. Oh, this is my desire. Amen. So we're about not to put you under. You all know the Lord. You all say. Yes. All right. Just want to make sure. We can lead the sinner's prayer right now. Amen. Okay. So let us go straight to the pool. And we'll put you all in the water. Is that all right? All right. Uh, just, just lead it. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Now we ask that you all just focus on the screen. It meant somebody. If you want to follow us, then that's fine. But if not, just sing with Brother, Brother Darius. Sing your song. Take me to the water. Amen. Take me to the water. If anybody else want to go to the water, you can follow me. Take me to the water. Oh, take me to the water. To be Baptize you in the name of the 
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost that the church say, Amen. Hello. Matthew 21, 1, 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. 21 as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethlehem on Mount Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt to buy her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took the place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say, daughter Zion, see your king, see your king comes to you, gentle riding on a donkey and on a colt, fool of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks for them, for Jesus to sit on. A large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut the branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him. Those that follow shouted, Hosanna of the son of David. Blessed is who he comes by the name of the Lord. Hosanna is the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowd answered, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth in Galilee. So amazing, so amazing, your love. 
so amazing, so amazing. You're so amazing. Everybody say, you're so The story is, say that's not how the story is, cause three days later, he rose again, and that's love, that's love, so I know he Cause first they hung them high. How many of y'all know that they hung them high? And then they stretched him wide. And he hung his head. How many of y'all know for you he died? So you're amazing. So you're amazing. So. Amazing, God, you are so amazing. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, so Amen. amazing, so amazing. My, my, my. So amazing. amazing. Somebody say he's amazing. Hallelujah. Give God some praise for how amazing our Lord and Savior Jesus is. If you know how amazing it is, amen. My, my, my. All right, just give God some praise for our praise team this morning. Have you been blessed this morning? Have you truly been blessed this morning? Amen. Scripture was read, so again, let me lift up a few verses from Matthew chapter number 21. Please, if you have your Bibles with you, just open it to that scripture. If not, just look at the screen. It will be up on the screen. You all look so beautiful, wonderful from up, from up here. Every morning I get up, I tell myself, this is a Palm Sunday. So I come to church. Because every Sunday is a Sunday to praise God. And next Sunday, there will be a few more that will be added to the number. But look at your neighbor and say, come to church every Sunday. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 21, uh, starting at verse number 8. A very large crowd spread the clocks on the floor, on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. On this Sunday, this Palm Sunday, uh, let's use as our subject, if you don't mind, don't lose your praise. It meant somebody? Don't, don't, don't lose your praise. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, let me encourage you this morning. Just keep on praising him. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, I just want to encourage you. Don't lose your praise. Amen. God, we say thank you for this time. It's time that we can proclaim your word on this Sunday. Holy Spirit, I pray you fall fresh on me. Give me what I need, the strength. Give me, oh God, the strength to proclaim your word. Give me a fresh anointing this morning to say, thus says the Lord. And then bless your people. Bless them to receive your word this morning. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. And somebody say thank you, Jesus. Life is hard. Yeah, yeah, life is hard. And sometimes it will cause you to lose your praise. Um, it will. Sometimes you wonder why so much is going on in this world. Uh, think about the war in the Middle East. Been more than five months and so many people have died. And so many people are starving to death. And there is no end in sight. If you keep on looking at the television, you will wonder, is there anything to praise God about? It's war in Sudan. It's war in Ukraine. Their energy infrastructure is under attack daily. So many people do not have supply of energy because of the war. People went to concert in Russia. More than 140 of them were gunned down by terrorists. Lord have mercy. Think about the situation in Haiti. There's no rule of law. There's lawlessness. Gangs have taken over the entire city of Haiti. Someone this morning is sitting on your right or sitting on your left or someone this morning is virtually in this worship service but they are suffering from depression. They are on medication just to be functional at work or wherever they find themselves. That they have a look on the face that says it is all right. But if you just ask them, is it really all right? And if they try to be honest with you, they'll tell you everything is not all right. People are struggling from self-confidence. Am I good enough? Will this ever happen to me? Our young people, some of them are about to graduate from high school. And they're still waiting for an accepting letter from a college. Uh, some of them are wondering if they will even go to college. There are parents who are wondering how they're going to pay the tuition. Some of them dealing with rejection. So in the midst of all of this, in the midst 
of everything that is going on in this world. Get this, I come by this morning on this Palm Sunday to encourage you, don't lose your praise. Don't, 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 that's, that's, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's, that's the encouragement this morning as you wave your palms and, and then as you praise God this morning. I, I know things may not be all right, but my sisters and my brothers, please don't lose your praise. That the enemy will do everything to drown your praise. Am I right about that? To, to muffle your praise, to stop you from praising the Lord, but don't fall for it because God is still looking for believers who will say like the prophet Habakkuk in chapter 3, 17 and 18, though the fig tree does not bug and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crops fails and the fields produce no food and though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the store yet yet I will rejoice in the Lord I, I will be joyful in God my Savior I just want to find out this morning are there any yet praise us in this house are, are there any yet worship us in the house are, are, is there somebody this morning who will say I know it's not alright but I still will press my way I, I still will wave my hands I still will lift up my voice because I know that God has not abandoned me. Are there any yes praises in the house this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. You see, in Hebrew, the word for praise is yada, which, which means to stretch your hands. That, that's what praise is, yada, to stretch your hands. You don't praise so much with your hand closed. You, you praise and you worship him with a stretch out hand. Somebody say amen. And when I stretch out my hands, get this, I am surrendering my all to God. And I'm letting go of everything. Uh, that's a song we say, all oh, to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I give, I, I surrender it all to Jesus. That, that's why when I praise him, I'm saying, God, take control. And that's where the problem lies. Because for many of us, we find it get this difficult to let go. And let God take control. Help me preach this morning. Just look at your neighbor and say, it's time to let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's time. It's time to let go. And it's time to let God take control. It's time to let go. And let God take control. Let God be God. Amen, somebody. If you could fix it all by yourself, you don't need God. Uh, but there are some things you just turn it over to the Lord. Uh, that they hurt you, turn it over to the Lord. Uh, that they stab you in the back, turn it over to the Lord. Uh, to talk bad about you, turn it over to the Lord. Uh, 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 to deceive you, turn it over to God because I declare that God will fight your battle. Is that a witness in this house? God will turn it around. Hallelujah, somebody. God will fix it for you. Is there anybody in this house who said, Pastor, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I had this burden. I had this weight on my shoulder. And I couldn't function. I couldn't think, I couldn't sleep, but I turned it over to God. And when I turned it over to God, I realized that he'll give me peace, that passive or understand. I turned it over to God and I realized he gave me joy, unspeakable and full of glory. I just want to ask somebody this morning, whatever you're going through, just turn it over to God and God will fix it for you. God will fix it for you. Uh, we see this very concept in this text. I was Jesus told his disciples, go into the village 
and you will see a donkey and a court tie there. I, I don't have enough time to explain all of this, so we're just going to move on. Somebody said move on. Jesus told them, untie them and bring them to me. Now, if anyone raises an issue, there will always be people who will raise up an issue. Just in case, if anybody asks you, why are you untying these animals? Just tell them boldly, the Lord needs them. And everything will be okay. The, the Lord needs them. The Lord needs them. In Greek, the word Lord here is kurios. Some people pronounce it kurios, which means Lord, master, or owner. Bible scholars and theologians interpret this as meaning Jesus intended to convey the idea that he is the owner owner of the donkeys. The, the, the master needs them. If anybody raise any issue, just tell them the master needs them. So Jesus was telling his disciples, just understand I own it. Jesus is Lord of all. Amen, somebody? And he owns and has a right to everything. That's why he is the curious. He is the master and he's the owner. Uh, growing up in Sunday school, we used to sing this song. He got the whole world. Is there anybody who knows that song this morning? He got the whole world in his hand. He, he, he got everything in his hand. He got you and me in his hand. He got my daddy and my mommy in his hand. And so I just got news for somebody. I know what you've been showing off that new car. I know you've been showing off your new boo. I know you're so happy because you just closed on that house. But at the end of the day, just know the money in your bank and the money in your pocket and the money in your wallet, whatever you have belongs to God. It meant somebody. Whatever you have belongs to God. And when God tells you release it, there's a reason why. And many of us, we save, but like the preacher said, our Pockets and our pocketbooks are not saved enough because we hold on to things. But there will be times when God will tell you, trust me. Trust me. Just trust me and release. Because when you release, you will see that I can open the windows of heaven and pour down my blessings upon you in ways that you cannot imagine. And just in case somebody is saying, but pastor, I've learned to release, but I don't see the blessing. I tell you, you're wrong because he woke you up this morning. Just the mere fact that you can breathe the air that he has means that you are blessed. Just the mere fact that you got food on your table means that you are blessed. Just the mere fact that you got, you have roof over your head means that you are blessed. Are there any blessed folks in the house? Is there anybody this morning who can look back over your life and say, God, I thank you that I'm blessed. I may not have everything that I want, but I got everything that I need because your word says you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Is there anybody this morning? You just glad that you are blessed. Open your mouth for the fruit of your lips and give God some praise like you mean it, like he bless you. Has he healed anybody? Has he made a way for anybody? Throw your head back and say glory. Say glory. Hallelujah.
This is why you cannot allow what you see or what you feel and what is going on in your life to cause you to lose your praise. So Jesus told his disciples, bring them over to me. Just, just tell them the master needs them. The Bible said to brought the dunk into Jesus and get this, to put the clocks or the clothes on the donkey. And the Bible says Jesus fulfilled what was spoken of 2,000 years before that day by Zechariah the prophet. 2,000 years before, say to the daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey. On a court, the four of a donkey, Jesus was fulfilling the prophecy. And the Bible says, a large crowd spread the cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the tree. They just ran to the tree and cut branches and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that follow shouted, Hosanna. Somebody say Hosanna this morning. Amen. Oh, somebody say it like you mean it. Uh, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now, now, now Hosanna in Hebrew means save us. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Hosanna in Hebrew means save us. I don't know about you, but we need Hosanna praise. Uh, we need to have a Hosanna praise in our spirit. Hosanna, Lord, save our community. From, save our schools from gun violence, Hosanna. Save our young people from drugs and drug overdose, Hosanna. Save our young men and women from joining gangs and going to prisons, Hosanna. Save us, this nation, from the drama of another four years of trumpeting, Hosanna. Hosanna, save us. Save our marriages. Save our families. Save our fam families, uh, our finances. They were making the way to Jerusalem, singing Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And verse 10 says, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? <laughs> Another translation said, the whole city was trembling with excitement. Jerusalem was thrown in an uproar. The city was moved. Let, let me say this. Your praise will stir up something. Are you all still with me? Because I know some of you looking at your watches right now and saying it's time for brunch. Look at your neighbor and say hang with the preacher a little bit longer. Just hang with him. Your praise will stir up something. So don't change your praise because of what people say or think about you. I just said something. Don't, don't change your praise. They will complain you are too loud. You are too emotional. It don't take all that. But I always like to say yes. It takes all that and more. Because you were in there when you healed my body. You were in there when he made a way for me. You, you were in there when he put food on my table. You were in there when he brought my son back home. You were in there when my daughter said, I need Jesus in my life. You were in there when he picked me up and put my feet on solid ground. You got no right to tell me how to praise. I praise him the way I want to praise him. I praise him because he's been good to me. Don't let nobody 
take your praise. If you want to shout, shout. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to run, run. Because God been good to you. Has God been good to anybody? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Listen, your praise should not be based on anybody's comfort level. You know, no, no, I, I'm not here to make you comfortable. <laughs> I've been going through a lot on Monday. I've been going through a lot on Tuesday. I've been going through a lot on Wednesday. I've been going through a lot on Thursday. I've been going through a lot on Friday. I've been going through a lot on Saturday. And I press my way into his house because I know he's here. So my praise is not meant to make you comfortable. My praise is meant to lift up the name of Jesus. Is there anybody who want to lift the name of Jesus? Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Let God be glorified. Let you be edified. And let the devil be terrified. Say yeah. That's why you praise him. You praise him so that God will be glorified. You praise him so that you will be edified. And you praise him so that the devil will be terrified. Say yeah. Say yeah. So they asked the question, who, who, who is this? And, and the answer is this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Let me drink some water. You see, uh, the crowds in Jerusalem that responded, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee, had a 50% right. Mm -hmm. It was Jesus. But he was more than a prophet. Now, now get this. There are two crowds. The first crowd, Bible says to put the clothes on the road and to cut palm branches. And it said, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The other crowd said, why are you making all that noise? Who is this? Because it was Passover time in Jerusalem. It was festival time in Jerusalem. And he said, this is Jesus. The prophet, now, don't miss this. When they said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Galilee, they were not giving him any major commendation. Because Nazareth was looked down upon. You remember Nathaniel, what he said? Those of you who be in Sunday school. He, he said, can any... That, that's, that's why Nathaniel, he said, can anything good? And so... When they said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth, basically was saying, he all that. He is not all that. There are so many people today who will tell you, Jesus is not all that. 
So many teachers out there would tell you he was just a prophet. But I don't know about you, but I belong with the first crowd. Because in that crowd, there were those who were there who saw when he opened the eyes of the blind. And in that crowd were those who were there who saw when he made the lame to walk. And in that crowd were those who were there when he called Lazarus. Lazarus come out of that grave. And in that crowd were there, were, were there people who were at the wedding where he turned the water into wine. In that crowd was there were people who realized the lady who said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? In that crowd were those who were there when Jesus was teaching in the house and those brothers went up on the roof. They didn't care about what the trustee would say. They didn't care about what the house owner would say. The Bible says they started to open the roof and they pulled down their friend and Jesus healed him. I don't know about you this morning, but I come by to tell you I'm part of that first crowd. I'm part of that crowd who understand that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is King of Kings. I'm part of that crowd who understand that nobody can do me like Jesus. I'm just trying to find this morning as I bring this sermon to a close. Are there anyone in the house this morning? Are there those in the house this morning who belong to the first crowd? Who say, I know what Jesus did for me. When I think of my life, when I look back and see where he took me from. This morning I'm here to wave my palm. This morning I'm here to tell somebody that don't see me today. If you only have seen me yesterday, you won't believe I still be in church today. But God, but Jesus, hallelujah, somebody. Is there anyone this morning? You just want to give God praise. You just want to thank God and say, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. There's a song, there's a song that said trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. Trouble in my way. I got to cry sometimes. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. Because I know Jesus. 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 The light of the valley, Jesus. The bright of morning star, Jesus. I know Jesus will fix it for me. Is there a witness this morning? Did he fix it for you? Did he turn it around? Did he put the feet on solid ground? Throw your head back and say glory. 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 All right, I'm, I'm done preaching. So just stand where you are. Just stand where you are. The Bible says, because I had three points, but I knew I was going to be too long, so I told the folks, I ain't going to put my points up there. Because by the time I get to the third one, I'm going to be alone preaching in church this morning. But, but, but get this. The, the first praise said says uh, your praise attracts the presence and the favor of God the, the Bible says God inhabits he's enthroned so just your praise attracts God's blessing God's favor that's why you cannot lose your praise and, and then the second point this is what it says. It said, your praise is connected to your destiny. And you know, David knew 
that, Sister Gloria. And that's why when David brought the ark, he took on his robe. He didn't care about anybody. He gave God the best praise. And then the last point, preachers, you can work on the three points for me and preach it somewhere else. So your praise of victory is in your praise. It says victory is in your praise. You know how I know that? Because in Judges, when the children of Israel got to the Jericho wall, God told them, you don't have to fight this battle. God told them, just walk around the wall. On day one, just walk around the wall. On day two, don't say a word. Just walk. On day seven, walk seven times. And on the seventh time, open your mouth when you hear the sound of the trumpet. And give me the best praise that you have. And the walls will come trembling down. Now, now get this, get this now. We're about to go, but there are some walls in your life. There are some walls in your life. Is there anybody who got some issues in your life today? Now, do this for me. Give God a shout of praise. And I declare those walls will come. Come on, somebody, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Give me praise that you made it. Come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on now. Let, let me try you all. You have been baptized in this group. I got the, those who were baptized. So let me find out if y'all can give God the best praise. Let me hear you on the count of three. One, two, three. All right. Let me try you all. See anybody who knows what it means to bring them walls down. One, two, three. I'm done. Reverend Don, you're the executive pastor. You're leading the whole group. Let's see what you got on the count of three. One, two, three. All right, Lady Rita, you're the first lady. You're leading this whole section. So on the count of three, let me hear what you have. Oh, we got it five chairs here. One, two, three. Where well, brother Colette is on this side. One, two, three. Now the God of that press is there. Come on, somebody bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I asked Tara to lead us into the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Say, I've never lost my praise. Look at your neighbor and say, I've never lost my praise. Come with her.
Some of you have been through the divorce, but you're still standing. Some of you have been through sicknesses, diseases, illnesses, but you're still standing. Some of you have lost so much. You love a loved one. You lost somebody dear to you, somebody, your mama, your daddy, your child, your good friend, but you still standing. You still standing because you know that in all things God is working for the good. You still stand it because you know that God is still your refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. You still stand it. You still stand it. So let's do that one more time, brother Booker, and then I'll open the doors of my church, of the church. Hallelujah! Now, as you sing with them, I want you to minister to somebody. I want you to minister to somebody on your right, somebody on your left. I never lost my hope. I never lost my hope. Turn to somebody and tell them I never lost my joy. I never lost my joy. Come and tell somebody I never lost my faith. I never lost my faith. Most of all. Most of all. I never lost my Sunday. Just, just lower you a little bit, musician. Just lower you a little bit for me. On, on this first Sunday, on this Sunday, on, the, on, the, on this Palm Sunday, I believe in my spirit that somebody needs Jesus Christ. Listen, this is what the Bible says. We all have sinned. We all have sinned and fought in short of God's glory. And then the Bible tells us because of that sin in Romans 6, the wages of that sin is death. But listen to what he says. The gift of God is eternal life. And then you move a little bit to 10 chapter of Romans. He said, if you would just confess him with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God saved him, raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's all that is needed. And so if you hear this morning, after this word of being preached, and you want Jesus Christ in your heart, if you hear this morning, and you want to join the church, if you hear this morning, and there's a need to rededicate your life to the Lord, just come. We wait for you. We wait for you. Is there one? Is there one this morning? On this Palm Sunday, you want to give your life to the Lord. We have these preachers here to pray for you. Are you in the house this morning? I, I, I believe you here, you want to join a church. Are you in the house this morning? Is there one? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have another this morning? This is, this is your day. This is your day. This is your day to give your life to the Lord. Don't, don't hold back. We we'll wait for you. We we'll wait for you. Come and give God some praise. Let's encourage them as they come. Let's encourage them as they come. Let us encourage them. Come on, let's encourage them as they come. Come on, somebody. 
Are you in the house today? Are you in the house today? Are you in the house today? Today is your day to give your life to the Lord. Today is your day to join the church. Today is your day to rededicate your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Burton. I went for you. I'm not going to rush this time. This is your time. This is your time to join. This is your time to give your life to the Lord. This is your time to rededicate your life to the Lord. Are you in the house? Hallelujah. for them, that the word has touched somebody's heart. Hallelujah. There's still room for one. There's still room for one. There's still room for one. Those young people coming down. Give God some praise for them. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. for me just before you take your seat just ask somebody who's by you and they said do you need me to walk you down just ask them maybe they would you know they may say yes or no ask, ask somebody I said, do you need me to walk you down do you need me to walk you down don't, don't be afraid I have empowered you ask, ask amen that, that's, you see that Somebody over there, you say? Okay. Let me see that for a minute. We're about to go home. People been praying for. If there was a decision, they'll let me know. Anthony and Tiana and Nora, they joined the church today. Thank you all. God bless you all. My, my, my. Hey, Amen. Lakeisha. Okay. She's joined Eternal Chapel. Give God some praise for Lakeisha. Hey, Amen. This a family. The Jackson family. Joining the church. Hey, Amen. The Jackson family. Lord have mercy. Go call the Holy. Alton, Virginia, Allison, and Ava. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. church and she had a heart transplant. Thank you. I'm giving this test 
testimony because God has sent me. He has defined my purpose through the heart transplant. I didn't know what it was supposed to be, but I couldn't sit any longer without telling you God is awesome. He still does miracles. He gives you hope. He gives you strength when you don't think you can get up. He gives you that strength. He is with you at all times. I am here. He has sent a message. He has delivered me. He has given me promises. He has allowed me to go back to work. I waited two years, and I got a job part-time teaching adult ed. And just two weeks ago, I was like, God, I don't know. I don't know. And the director came to me and she said, will you be willing to teach the Haitian Creole immigrants that come over? Because Cobb County schools will not accept them in. Will you work with them? And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hold on now. Give me your name. Dominic. Dominic. Zivia. Dominic and Zivia give their lives to Jesus Christ. Turner Chapel. We can bless the name of the Lord. Both of them give their lives to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Come on, let's receive the benediction now. Amen as we leave. And uh, as we leave this place, go. Share and invite. One more time, let's say it together. As you leave the place, what? Go. There is nothing like saying people gave their lives to Jesus Christ. That could be somebody's pastor tomorrow. And we give God some praise. Don't lose your praise in spite of the storm. Keep on praising him because God will make a way somehow. Receive the benediction now. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you give you his shalom, his peace now and forevermore. And as we leave this place, we pray for the Willis family. Pray that God will give them peace and comfort. Thank God for the life of our brother Hudson Willis. We lift up Lynette and the children and the family. These are many other blessings we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. And somebody say hallelujah. Now you all you'll have another praise on Daryl or that's the song? That's it. You all have a happy Palm Sunday.